Okay, let's begin. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. It is an exciting day for us uh, as we launch a new product for the Dataflex market. Um, as you all know, Crystal Report development has been dead to Dataflex developers for a long time. Um, Crystal 11 came out in 2006, and while an alternative has been created, developers are not ready to switch. And there are two reasons for that. One is that the redesigning report is not an easy option for many, especially if you have several hundred reports. And two, the alternative does not have all the features that they need. Uh, we picked up on this thread of crystal development uh, late last year when I saw a couple of postings in the Dataflex news group about the future of crystal reports. And we started investigating. And in March 2011 at the Synergy conference, I met up with a few developers who were very concerned about the, the future of crystal. And uh, we were able to build a prototype by June and then we uh, saw that it can be done and we committed 100% to this uh, project and the result is Flex to Crystal. Um, <clears throat> so from the very beginning we set ourselves a few goals uh, and we wanted to make sure that we did not deviate from that goal. The first goal obviously was that we should be able to run existing Crystal report without any changes and what that means is not just the design of the report but also the surrounding code uh, next to that. And when you're talking about surrounding code, we also wanted to make sure that the integration with Visual Studio was complete and that uh, that's one of the common ways of developing reports and we wanted to make sure that uh, the complete uh, compatibility with the studio is maintained. Um, and there are multiple ways of having report viewers, but the report viewer that we will support in the first version, we wanted to go with the integrated viewer. And another important goal from the beginning was that we will not support native Dataflex database. And the reason for that is very obvious. A native Dataflex database requires special handling. You need to have um, an API into that, or you have to go through ODPC and all the associated issues we didn't want to deal with. Plus, Crystal Report does run faster with the Dataflex database, with, with, with the SQL database. Okay. And one of the things we wanted to make sure is that it's very easy to integrate into existing system and developers would have to do very little work um, to, to take the existing report and existing Dataflex code and make it work with new Crystal version. So we started off with a new version of Dataflex, newer versions with the libraries. So the, the current version of the product will uh, have libraries for Visual Dataflex 2.1, will have packages for older version. Um, there are some customers who express interest in VDF7 and there are ways to do that but we are not focusing on that right now but there, there probably would be a way to do this. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that we're not just supporting older stuff but we wanted to make sure that the new versions of the new features in Crystal are also supported. And Oliver will show you in a few minutes how those things uh, work and how we're doing that. And one of the most important things in this is because you are now dealing with a, a, an unknown entity uh, which is the .NET components and distribution of the .NET components. Uh, we spend a lot of time and are spending a lot of time in trying to make sure that the installation and distribution uh, of these components should be very easy. And it's, it's not as easy. Uh, you know, when you first try it's .NET 2, .NET 4, uh, what's installed on the machine was not in, installed on the machine, but we are doing going through all of that and we'll make sure that it's easy enough for our customers to install and, and work with that. So, uh, you know, the question is why did we do this? Obviously because the developers wanted, there is an opportunity for us to do something uh, about that. It fits into our business model, what we do with the drivers, what we do with uh, Documenter, what we've been doing, and, and, and with this. Um, with Crystal, is it's a dead product, um, but has a uh, market has a great need for that. And, um, you know, uh, and it's interesting, it's challenging for us. And, and at the same time, one of the interesting thing about this is that in order to do this, we had to actually tackle another problem. And that problem was basically how do you support .NET from Dataflex? Because Crystal has all these components that has .NET interface now and for and Dataflex supports COM. So we had to go through that hurdle. So it became even more interesting when we said, you know, we, we don't have to just focus on one problem, which is bringing Crystal to the market. But what we would like to do is maybe address two problems at the same time. And when you look at the, the way this whole, uh, the, all, uh, the Flex to Crystal product is set up, there's basically three components to that. There is a Crystal Report um, .NET interface, uh, all the classes and libraries that Crystal provides. And then what we ended up creating was something we call Flex to .NET. And this component basically 
is designed to take any .NET control out there or any .NET assembly and generate COM automatically from it. And once we were able to do that, using Crystal into that would be, was a Crystal in, bringing Crystal into DataFlex was easier. And then we created these Flex to Crystal classes and the compatibility layer, which Oliver worked on, uh, which allows you to complete interface. So basically, you're you know there are two aspects to this product. It's not just the Flex to Crystal product, but it's also that it's, you know, there is a .NET component that is designed in such a way that it allows automatic consumption of a lot of the .NET controls. Now, Flexor.NET basically, um, you know, has the uh, the the um, the .NET to COM interoperability bridge. That's one of the components in there. And the other is it generates COM um, interfaces for .NET assemblies, <coughs> and then you can take that COM component into DataFlex and work with that. Um, Crystal itself. It was our first test because Crystal is very complex. It's just not like any uh, uh, control out there with simple um, UI control that you could include into DataFlex. Crystal is a really very complex, com uh, uh, you know, interface. So we figured that if this works, then obviously we should be able to work with other other um, controls as well. However, this is not the focus of this webinar. Uh, that's a topic for another webinar, and we'll go into that sometime in the future. Uh, where we are right now, we are ready to give the developers. Uh, community technology preview, the CTP. Uh, we are actually done with most of the development work. Uh, we're just ironing out some of the little issues uh, with the deployment and installation. And uh, uh, I have been told that we can have it ready by December 15. So you all will be notified um, of this. And if you want to try out, you'll be able to start playing around with the report. And Oracle, or, or Oliver will show you how easy this is going to be. Our target date is uh, that we would go into beta by February 2012. We do have some things that are outstanding, uh, like CDO and Oliver, Oliver will go further into that. But we expect to finish it by that time. And our expected release date is March 2012 on that. Um, so what's next for us? Um, we will need active beta testers for, for the CTP. We, need, uh, we have been getting very good feedback from the community about this. And that has really helped. And those who know, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, but the, once we have the, once we get the CTP into your hands, you'll be able to tell us more about what we are doing right or wrong. Uh, of course, your feedback and suggestions uh, are expected. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Oliver. Uh, Oliver will walk you through the uh, all the uh, good things, uh, good stuff, and then we'll have a QA towards the end of the uh, webinar. Um, Oliver, thank you, Riaz. Can you just turn over presenter controls to me? I'll get going here. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna start this out um, by actually doing a real time update uh, upgrade from a uh, old RDC Crystal report to the uh, new Flex to Crystal interface, and uh, the way we're gonna get that going is just with uh, three steps. It's as easy as CCC. We're gonna do a uh, change of the includes at the beginning of the report. Next up, we're going to connect the report to the Flex to Crystal classes. And we're going to be able to do that with simple replacement. And then we're going to compile. After we've done that, we'll run the report. And then we'll, we'll go and look at some of the, uh, the other details related to this. So let's go ahead and do this now. You know how uh, live code compiles go. So we're going to, uh, we've been using the order entry for it. And actually, the order entry works out well since um, uh, data access used it to show some of the more advanced features of Crystal. So there are some things in here that, that uh, many of you aren't even using yet, but that we support. So let's get started. We're going to use our check for Flex to Crystal package. Next up, we're going to go down here. We're going to add flex2 right there. 
I'm going to add flex to right here. We're going to go back up to the top. We're actually going to do a search and replacement to finish this off. I'm going to search for C crystal. We're going to replace it with C flex to crystal. Okay, save this file. We've now completed a conversion. So let's go in and take a look at it. So there we go. That's now running Crystal Reports 2011. And that's as, that's as easy as it is. In fact, the, uh, the other report uh, listed here, the orders by customer, would be the exact same process. We change those couple of lines, and that's the extent of it. So uh, now that we've seen how simple it is to do, literally it should be just as simple as a search and replace for almost anything. Let's take a look at, uh, at, at some of the other aspects of what we've done here. Um, so, first up, uh, Riaz went over this just a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to spend a little bit more time on it. Um, the flex to .NET component uh, that we built here re really is the key um, for, uh, for making this work. You know, you can create a simple wrapper in, uh, in Visual Studio, but this flex to .NET is not a simple wrapper. This is actually a very uh, uh, deeply integrated uh, piece of the product here. And it allows for all kinds of odd COM interface situations to work, uh, or excuse me, .NET interfaces to work through the COM interface in, into VDF. And in fact, Crystal uses just about every piece of the COM specification. Um, so we had to deal with just tons of that in relation to Flex to .NET. So it supports many advanced COM features. Um, the Flex to Crystal VDF libraries uh, are really where you're going to see the bulk of the product that you'll be using. It's a true compatibility layer for your existing reports. Uh, so for instance, uh, there is the sorts, the way they're done in VDF right now. Um, you actually go in and add a sort programmatically in your code. You'll see things like, uh, if we go in here. Okay, if we go in here, you'll see stuff where, like on this very line right here, where they delete a sort order, and then they'll append a sort order right here. Um, that's, that's a big change in uh, the way Crystal handles things in the .NET version. In the .NET version, they don't want you to delete sorts, and in fact, or add sorts, and they don't even give you the ability in the, com, or in the .NET layer to do that. So we've actually gone in and added that ability um, into our library so that you have compatibility for all of your old reports. So there's items like that in that compatibility layer that, that just make it uh, you know, that much easier for you to convert your reports over. And uh, our goal with this, of course, was to maintain the old interface as, as much as possible. Um, so what we did uh, for that was we went through and based our classes on top of the built-in data access classes that are already there. So the C flex to crystal components, for instance, the, uh, the actual crystal report class is based on the built-in data flex C crystal report class. We subclassed it to give it the additional functionality uh, that's required for flex to crystal. So based on that, we're able to uh, make sure that we maintain support for many of the things that you're using. Sort fields are in there. You can append and uh, delete sort fields the way you always have been able to. There's full report, uh, full support for sub-reports also. Um, the older versions of Crystal had um, parameters in them. Now, this wasn't something that, that Dataflex developers used uh, very often. A lot, of, a lot of people use formulas, but we'll talk about that a little later, but we have, uh, we have support for those right now. 
there's also support for the uh, myriad of export formats that Crystal supports. Um, they have changed formats over the years, so we actually try and default to a format if you're picking one of the ones that, that isn't supported anymore. Um, and uh, we give you some options that way. And uh, in addition to that, we have full support for formula fields and for selection formula. And uh, then CDOs will be supported also in this. So next up, why should you upgrade to, uh, to Flex to Crystal and to Crystal Reports 2011? Well, first of all, you can uh, use Crystal 2011, as Rio said, uh, said, from VDF 12 and up. Uh, so we've got full support for that. Um, you also, of course, will be able to get support for the Crystal product itself uh, from SAP, whereas on the older versions of Crystal, they are dropping some support for those um, and, and have for older versions uh, over the years. And, of course, most... Uh, the most compelling reason is the new features that you get access to in Crystal. So now we're going we're gonna to spend some time on these new features. First up, we have built-in barcodes. Uh, we're going to look at their new read-only viewer, which lets you distribute re, uh, reports either with data embedded in them as a sample report or also um, as something that your customer couldn't change. We're going to take, it, uh, take a look at something new called the parameter panel. And also related to this, there's a new interactive viewer uh, that the, the base viewer has some support for interactivity built in past what it has in previous versions. And then we're going to look at a new feature in relation to portrait and landscape mode. So first up, barcodes. In prior versions of Crystal, you, of course, could use barcodes. The way you do that was uh, by using a, a font. Uh, if you install the font on the, uh, on the workstation, you could use that font in a report and generate a barcode. Uh, Crystal has essentially baked this functionality in and made it so you don't have to pick a font. You can actually take any field, like, for instance, on, on this sample report here, I took uh, the order number and turned it into a barcode. And literally, it's just as simple as right-clicking on it and saying, make into a barcode. Uh, the support that's built in is for code 39. And uh, there are, uh, I think, probably 10 or 12 others available. And they actually are working with third party for this. It's a company called Azalea, who's, who's known for their barcode products. And they actually will sell you. You have to you have to buy the other barcodes, but they'll sell you a, a DLL that Crystal can use to enable support for other barcode types. So that's basically the barcode supporter. Next, some of these read-only reports. Now, this is something a lot of developers have wanted for a long time. Uh, the idea with these is that you may want to take your report and give it to your customers, but a lot of developers worried about their customers going in and buying a license of Crystal reports and either modifying their reports and then, of course, the developer having to support that or trying to get around fees that the developer may charge for customizations to their product that involve the reports. Uh, this gives you a way to, to capture that and keep that from occurring. Um, it lets you make a report where once you set the items for the report and give it out, that's it. They can't even open it in... Uh, the Crystal Report Studio anymore. And for you, you keep the master version of the report, and when you make changes to it, you just tell it to generate a new read-only copy of that. Now, there's some issues with these read-only reports to be aware of, and uh, I just want to be clear about this. You can't change the data, so data source location on a read-only report. You can't create formula fields programmatically in a read-only report, and you can't set selection formula that way. So actually to use the, uh, the read-only feature effectively if you're using formula fields and selection formula, you have to use some of the other new features uh, that we enabled support for also, um, namely parameters. So parameters are the way Crystal has wanted you for years to do things. VDF developers haven't always done it that way. To use read-only reports at least, um, they'll definitely need to do that. So 
these new features, of course, expose a new interface. Um, and from here on out, we'll be discussing new features that require code changes on your part. Um, some of them are a little bit larger than others, but uh, I think you'll see that, that it really gives you some, some neat options to work with. First thing we're going to look at is parameters. Classically, developers have used um, formulas to pass variables, uh, to pass variable data onto Crystal reports. So for instance, they will do a send assign formula uh, to set the customer state in this example. Using parameters, you instead define a parameter in Crystal reports, uh, in your report, and you're going to access a little bit differently here. A parameter is an object that has multiple things that you can do on it. In this case, we want to set the value of it. So instead of doing this assigned formula, we have to do a little bit more code here. Um, and parameters also, one of the things about them is that uh, if you don't set a parameter and uh, you run the report, you'll actually get a pop-up dialog from Crystal asking for the value of that parameter. So it actually has some interactivity with the user on those. So we're going to take a look at how a parameter is defined in Crystal reports. Just so you can kind of see what we're working with here. Okay, so these are my parameter fields. In this case, uh, we're using it to set the start and end customer. And there are multiple ways to use it. So you can see the, the parameter dialog is, is pretty capable here. Um, parameters can be constrained dynamically to uh, a data source, or they can be static um, and, of course, can have a data type. They support ranges. Um, and you even go in on parameters here, and you can set what the prompting information will be for a parameter. And most importantly, um, you can set whether or not it's optional right here. And you can set whether it's shown on the viewer panel. So uh, there's a lot more to set up on a parameter than there is on just a simple formula field because it's not truly a variable. It's, it's a lot deeper than that. So now let's go in and take a look at what this does. So we're going to switch over and run our order entry example again. We're going to go to the customer list using parameters. So this is the, that standard view that uh, we've all seen plenty of times before. And we're going to go in here and tell it to sort by number, and we're just going to get 1 through 25. And we'll tell it to be descending. Now, as you can see, when you run a report speed-wise, um, the very first time you run a report, since it has to load .NET now, and, and of course that's for Crystal, Crystal needs .NET, it can be a little bit slower the first time you run a report. After you've run it that first time, they come up very quickly. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, we have a pretty simple report, descending order, and uh, along the left here, you can see this new parameter panel. These are all, in this case, I have every parameter enabled for viewing. You can say whether or not they show up over here even. Um, but what this allows you to do is we set those things on our report view over there. We set these items. Uh, if you enable this and have your parameters visible, all of a sudden your end user can go in and tweak the report after it's been run. You don't have to allow this, but if you want to allow it, it it allows all sorts of things to happen. So let, let's take a look at what we can do with this. What we're going to do, we're going to completely change this entire report. So we're going to say that I didn't name this field very well, but it's saying whether I want to go by customer ID or name. So we are going to go here we go by name. And, and we're going to go right here. We're going to change that to the letter A. 
just have a stop point coming in here. I think we've got our first new webinar feature. After I pull this up, I get some added features where it changes my focus around. That's nice. Okay, A through F, and we're also going to change this one here to sort by name. Okay, so before we were doing a numeric sort, and uh, it was sorted, uh, or a numeric filter, excuse me, and it was sorted by uh, customer number. I've just gone in on the parameters here and changed it uh, to be based on the name instead and to go from letters A to F. Now, if you notice, I'm still descending. I didn't change that. And we now have from the letters A to E, of course, because it doesn't include that. So uh, E is the last one there. And you can see our numbers are all different. They're, they're outside that range. So it actually um, re-ran the report on the fly there uh, and, and did everything without having to do anything programmatically. Code-wise, um, to, to actually make the parameters work, um, you know, we do have to change those things as we showed uh, as we showed before. But once you've done that, all of this you can do without any work. That that you can go in here. The end user can go in and change all kinds of stuff uh, just to do this. So let me just show you back end wise what we did on that one. Okay. So I just took those same fields that we were using on the report view, and basically I have you know a stack of parameters for <coughs> excuse me for uh, the sorting, the sort choice, sort direction, whether it's ascending or descending. <coughs> excuse me, and then the uh, start customer and end customer right in here. So it's not a huge change to code, and in fact, you can see that. On this report, I still have some pieces of it that are using the uh, assigned formula method, the, the field at the bottom that shows um, uh, some of the stuff that's being done is still using the assigned formula. So you can intermix these, uh, you know, the new features with the old without any problem at all. So that is parameters. Now let's, uh, let's go back over to our slides here. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about sorts. So as I mentioned, we had to do a lot of work, a, a quite a bit of work to make this one line uh, work properly. Crystal doesn't want it done this way anymore. We fully support it, though. It works. It works well. Um, so the the issue was is basically what Crystal wants to get to, what, what they want their developers to do is to embed all of the sorts into the report um, and basically leave them there. That's the way they will work. So uh, that's, uh, that's what is currently in place. The new method of working with this, um, as you can see, requires a lot more code. Um, and this is to change the direction of the sort is what I'm doing here. Uh, before, we would have deleted all the sorts, added this new one. In this case now, I go out and I find the current sort that's in the report, and I change the direction of it. Um, there are some very good reasons to do this. I'm going to show that to you now. We're going to go back over in here and close off this report. And we're going to run this one instead. Okay. So this report has sorts embedded in it. And uh, in fact, this one also has a parameter on it. And uh, you'll see on the report here, I've got these buttons. They're, they're little. This is something that is, that is built into Crystal. You can't really change the look of the buttons at all. 
Um, it's it's just something, it, it's sort of a new feature for Crystal, so I think they're kind of fleshing out some of the details with it too. Um, but these right here, watch this. I'm going to just, right now you can see that we're descending uh, based on customer number on this report. I'm going to go in and hit that. Now as you can see, we've changed to an uh, ascending list for this on customer just by tapping that. Uh, that button. And in fact, this didn't require changing any code. There was no code for this to work. Um, and it didn't require rerunning the report. Um, Crystal will use, where it can for this, cache copies uh, of the pre-generated report and basically regenerate it on the fly uh, from the cache copy of the data. And in fact, I can go over here and you see American West, Stunning Software, 3A, I can go over here and now change it to be sorted by name, ascending or descending. So in fact, for this report, the sample report didn't have any options for how you viewed the sort at all. But I was able to go in on the report, add these controls in there, and then uh, code-wise, I just went in and told it not to delete the sorts. Uh, I removed that line to uh, that's normally in a report to delete sorts, and that's it. Um, from the crystal perspective, let's see, that's on this report here. Uh, one of the things you have is uh, this new bind sort control. And you can go in and literally it'll, it'll list all your different sorts. Crystals can, uh, crystal reports can have sorts on all kinds of stuff, including summaries and all of that. But literally, you take a report and you bind to it, and that's it. You've got the buttons there, and that's all there is to it. Um, now, on this rep report, this one uses sub-reports and grouping and stuff like that, so there's there's a little bit more to it on some on a report like this, but on, on something uh, a little bit simpler, that's about all you need to do. We're going to close that without saving. And let's switch back over. And... Uh, Let's just look at what I changed code-wise on that one, too. Okay, orders by customer. As you can see here, I've got some other things I've been working on in this report. Um, this is, if, uh, if we take out this right here, with the exception of the customer state, this is the standard report just as it was um, with area suppression and all of that built in. Um, nothing has changed to make these sorts work in this report. This report, in fact, didn't have uh, a sort added to it built in. They, they weren't actually doing that in the sample report. So for this case, all of that functionality required zero code changes, in fact. Um, so again, this is a, a feature that that you'll uh, want to think about whether you want your users doing this and where you want to implement it and things like that, but just opens up all kinds of possibilities. Before, the way this would have been done would be to embed a link that would cause the report to rerun, and, and of course, that means it's going back out to the database and doing that all over again, so all of that's gone. So that is sorts. Next up, we're going we're gonna to look at our last big feature here, this portrait landscape. And in fact, we don't have to really do a whole lot to show this off because we already implemented it in one of our reports here. So we just need to pull it up. And uh, on this report, one of the things we decided to do was we threw in a raw order detail list at the back of the report. Um, basically is an addendum to this report. So now let's go over there. There we go. As you can see there, finally, this is something developers have literally been waiting for for years. You can have a report that mixes portrait and landscape mode within the same report. The number of ways developers have, have tried to do this is just, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I've seen solutions where they take both reports. They, they don't, of course, allow a preview, and they output them to PDFs and put them together and, 
and just all kinds of solutions. You don't have to do that anymore. It supports having, um, uh, allowing you to change the page orientation of a report. So in this case, uh, this is a sub-report that we generated here at the back of the report. And uh, we go in here to this one here. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. Orders by customer. There we go. All orders. So you can see this page is definitely laid out in a landscape orientation. If I go here, you can see that this sub-report is in a portrait orientation. Uh, so that's literally about all there is to it. It's very easy to do. You set the orientation of the page. Um, it can be set at runtime. It's very, very easy. And literally, from the VDF perspective, there is nothing you have to do to make this work. That's literally all there is to it. So that's portrait landscape mode. Now we're uh, uh, going to just talk about some of the things that, that uh, is coming in some of the upcoming uh, versions, the beta version and, and on to the release of Flex to Crystal. So um, first up is CDOs. Right now the CDO support is not in the CTP. This is something that we're working on right now. And CDOs, not everyone uses. But those who use it definitely want it and need it, and we understand that. Um, we are spending time on it, and it is going to be in the product. CDOs are truly a different piece of the Crystal product, though. And in fact, CDOs have been left somewhat unchanged in Crystal um, uh, up to this point. So we should be able to support those without a, uh, too much trouble in uh, the next version. And in fact, we're also going to spend a little bit of time looking at ADO.net, which is another alternative. That's kind of the, uh, the new thing, uh, the newfangled way of doing CDOs. Uh, right now, our support in the product is uh, fairly broad, but there are some things that developers are going to be doing in their code that right now we just haven't added that certain method that you're using uh, or property that you're using that maybe its name's changed or something like that. So, we're going through all of those classes. All, right now there's about 80, 85 classes, somewhere in that range, in the old RDC interface that we have to match with the, uh, with the new Flex to Crystal product. And you know, each one of those classes may have anywhere from 10 to 100 or 150 methods and properties in them. So there's just a lot of pieces to go in and, and check and make sure they're working. So that's, that's really what we're working on right now also. Um, and on that same note, uh, we're looking at adding improved class support to this. So right now we have, uh, I think right now there's somewhere around 35 or 40 classes implemented. So we're about halfway done with getting the base class support in. Um, but we want to get all of those classes that maybe even just the occasional report uses, we want all of those to work exactly as you expect them to work. Right now, a huge majority of your reports will just work. Um, so we've had some, uh, some samples sent to us uh, from various developers, and uh, uh, you know, we've definitely gone in and worked on making those pieces uh, available to them that uh, are you know, a little bit different. Uh, we're also going to add a little bit in the way of studio integration. Right now, in general, there isn't much integration to do with Crystal Reports into the studio from the standpoint of modeling. Um, some developers may use the ActiveX control directly and do modeling with that directly. Um, and uh, you'll see when you switch that to using the Flex to Crystal version of the ActiveX that uh, although it'll run just fine, it won't model in the studio. So that'll be fixed in a future version. And uh, of course, there are many different ways of designing your reports, whether you embed an ActiveX onto a view or do something just that's outside of the way that, that uh, you know, most of us do our reports. There's plenty of proper ways of doing it that, that are a bit outside the norm, and we want to make sure all of those work for you. So those are things that, uh, that are being worked on right now. Um, the, uh, the CTP that will be coming out uh, is a time-limited version. 
Um, it will uh, it will run through January fifteenth, two thousand twelve, and that's Flex to Crystal. It's uh, time to open it up to Q and A. Riaz. Thank you, Oliver. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? The questions you can type at the bottom and uh, send to um, to the organizer, and then we'll repeat that. While we're waiting, uh, I'll show a couple other little pieces in here. Go in here, and I'm going to show a little bit of detail on the parameters. The um, the parameters can actually get very very complex to use depending on what you want to do with them. This is an example of one that I'm using for that report, so that you don't have to pass stuff to the report at all, um, and so they can get extremely complex if you want them to. Most reports won't need to do this. Um, this was just kind of uh, one of my tests to push the limits on it, allowing you to basically make any of the different pieces of it optional and, and still have them function. So a parameter is very much like uh, what you're used to for a formula. I believe on formulas you use the at symbol at the beginning of it. For a parameter you use the question mark and then the, the name of the parameter. So uh, you know, very minor change that way. And, uh, of course, this is what you would use in place of those formulas on those read-only reports. So, and uh, there's all kinds of different things that you can change and do. Like, for instance, on this one, you notice that there are no bound controls for the resorting. In this case, I decided to make all of the sorting be parameter based instead. So uh, if you notice on that report, let's see here, let's close it. Oh. That's one of the other things you gotta watch out for. Uh, Crystal reports has to have the report closed for it to work from anywhere else because they now open the report in exclusive mode. So on this report, I can, instead of necessarily using the bind controls, I can come over here and do the equivalent of them in an entirely different way and do ascending or descending and base it on uh, either customer, name, or city in this case and uh, do the sorting that way instead of having the bind controls. So you really have more options available to you on how you handle that. Do you have any questions, Rias? No, I don't have any questions, and we haven't gotten any questions so far. Okay. Um, but that's that may be a good thing, because your presentation covered almost everything, and there are no questions. <laughs> um, Very good. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, anyway, I mean, you know, the communication channel is always open. The emails are there. So if anybody has any questions, I'm sure we're going to receive some uh, um, questions. And we're going to do a quick polling. Uh, just to get a feed, feedback from you guys uh, about the the about the flex to crystal product and it will show up shortly on your uh, screen and I would appreciate if you could just uh, give your opinion and select an option and give your vote to that okay. so Okay, I mean, we don't expect a, uh, this is something, um, what hey, we asked, like to gauge is that, what are you, what, yeah? I've got a, I've got some questions, I guess you're not seeing them over there, someone hit me privately with a couple of questions. That's okay, you can repeat that and then answer the question. 
Okay, just waiting for him to come through right now. Oh, we have that poll going. Okay, uh, let's see. First question here, uh, these are from, from Will. It, he asks, the new code style is required for what Oliver showed with legacy and new style. Um, the, the new code style is, uh, like for instance on the, on the sorts, is um, that you are required to use that if you want to get, for instance, the uh, bind the sort controls because the, the old style actually deleted the sorts right out of the report. And so if they were bound, they became unbound at that point. So if you want to use those, um, you know, that's, that definitely has to, uh, to use the new style. Um, you, other than that, you do have the, uh, the ability to, to mix the styles. So you can, uh, for instance, if you wanted to have a parameter panel that um, had just a couple of options on it and you don't want to go through and redo your whole report, you could leave pieces of it uh, as formulas and then just have a couple of them that are parameters uh, instead. So you definitely can mix those two up. Um, his next question here is the Dataflex native database supported uh, as well? And the answer to that is no. Um, native Dataflex database support is not in the product and uh, we uh, don't have plans right now to add support for, for that. Um, and his last question here is, can the language of the preview report be changed? Let's see here. Are you, refer are you referring to, uh, to information related to the uh, start customer, all of this text that I have in the parameter panel and that sort of thing, Will? Um, is that what you're referring to with this? I'm just waiting for his reply. Okay, yes, that's what he's referring to. Um, yes, you can change those. Um, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't done that before. But yes, um, here, if I go on and show you, let me go on and show you this real quick. That is on this one here. Um, downloads. Okay, so um, if I go in and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a look at something real here, real quick here, properties. Oliver, while you look at that, I mean, I have a couple of other questions uh, about pricing. And the pricing we're going to finalize uh, in the next uh, few weeks, and we should have the pricing available in January. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few things. Uh, with Crystal, Crystal, previous versions of Crystal used to have developer, professional standard, and all of those different things. Um, but the new versions of Crystal, I think starting 2008 and onward, and certainly for Crystal 2011, they only have two versions. One is called Crystal Reports, and the other is Crystal Reports Server Edition. And the Crystal Reports is basically all in one, as far as our understanding is so far, that it's the Crystal Reports license for designers as well as for embedding. Uh, the report viewer can be downloaded free from their customer, from their side, uh, so you can distribute that freely. Um, if you want to make that uh, report available through a browser interface or outside the company through some other mechanism, then you use the Crystal Server Edition. What we are going to do is that we, we will not require customers to buy Crystal from us. We're not going to be attaching it to our product at all. It's you're free to buy wherever you want to buy it. But we also know that just uh, sourcing uh, Crystal Report is not going to be that easy for all developers. So we will provide some kind of a bundling also for those who want to avail that. Um, and that's a kind of a, that's a worldwide licensing. So anywhere in the world somebody wants to buy Crystal Plus, uh, all the components that go with it, they'll be able to purchase that from us as well. It's more for facilitating the sale um, for the users and making it easier for them. Uh, but some customers, when they deploy their Crystal Report, uh, they found that the customers already have Crystal Reports, but they were required to purchase uh, Crystal Developer licenses anyway, and that won't be necessary at all under uh, the new plan. So we'll have uh, more on this um, in, in probably by mid to eight, uh, mid January or something. 
Okay. And so uh, to answer your question, Will, yes, you can change text on this. Uh, regional settings and other things like that, I believe you can also. Uh, it's not something I've, I've really gotten into at all to, to know where I would go for that. For the, uh, for the text on the prompt here, as you can see, I was able to, I was able to make it Spanish for you. <laughs> Spanish start cuss. Um, so that is possible. I do see a couple other questions here. Um, we've got one here. Does Flex to Crystal do something to make the portrait landscape combination in a report work, or is that totally coming from Crystal? That is totally coming from Crystal. That is a new feature in Crystal Reports 2011, I believe, um, either 2008 or 2011 um, for that one, uh, where they started supporting mixing that. And by the way, this is something that has, has been an issue for years. So this is a big deal that that's there. I mean, uh, I know also for Microsoft reporting services that that's something that uh, they've just recently added uh, into their product as well. So, uh, you know, that, that's been a long time coming. So, but that, there's nothing on the, on the Flex to Crystal side to make that work. That's just one of those new features that, uh, uh, that you'll get to use in Crystal Reports that we thought you guys would be really interested in seeing. Um, another question here. Uh, let's see. I have a few questions here, Will, uh, Oliver. Okay, go ahead. All right. All right. So one question is: um, Is the Flex to .NET component ready to use to generate from other .NET based products? The answer is yes. Um, that's what we started off doing. That it should be generic enough. In fact, the first test that we did with this was uh, not Crystal, but some other off-the-shelf component. Uh, but to make it into a product, we still have some work to do. Uh, you know, some GUI interfaces, things like that. But yes, the engine is pretty much ready to work with any .NET component out there. And that's why, as I said in my presentation, that Crystal is one of the most complex ones out there, so if we can make it work for with Crystal, we can do with uh, almost anything out there. Um, the other question is, is Crystal getting any better uh, with deploying than in the past, which is uh, DLL hell? Uh, well, that's one of the things that I pointed out, that we wanted to make it easy to distribute, um, install and distribute. And um, We'll, uh, we haven't found anything uh, complicated so far because the, the, distributor, the distributable components would come from us um, along with some of the crystal stuff. And I think that .NET is a little bit more strict about what, what kind of hell you can create for your, for your users. Um, but um, I think that it's going to be easier than previous versions of crystal. Uh, Oliver, you have any comment on that? Yeah, they, I mean, I know they've done a little bit of work in that area. It's, it's it's still not as, as nice as uh, I know you would like it to be. They, they still have, um, you know, uh, definite issues there. Uh, they, they are working on improving that aspect of it for sure. Um, I don't think it's, it's quite as nice as um, the uh, uh, person asking hopes it will be uh, <laughs> quite yet. But, uh, that, you know, that is a piece um, that they have been doing constant work on. So... Uh, RP, we're going to do as much as we can, of course, to try and make it so that we're not adding more work on for you also. Um, you know, we realize that Crystal does have those complications, and so, you know, we don't want our product to, to add to your workload in that area, so. Okay. Well, we are, we're getting a bunch of questions right now, so uh, let me just go through. Um, there is a question is, uh, can this be used for the web? Uh, if you are, uh, Oliver, would you want to take that question? I, I'm assuming that's, uh, by yeah, web, uh, you mean web app? <coughs> yeah, the, right now we haven't really looked at that aspect of this at all, uh, to be completely honest. We haven't looked at it. We have thought of it. Um, uh, you know, the, uh, there's multiple viewers uh, with, with the newer versions of Crystal, of course, and one of those is a web viewer. So, you know, that's, that's definitely something that, that's out there. Um, really, since on the VDF side, we didn't know how many people were, you know, necessarily needing to do that or wanting to do that or whatever. It isn't something that we've really uh, uh, put time into right now. But it's, it's definitely something that, uh, you know, we will be investigating further. And, and it, you know, if you're interested in that, let us know so, so, that, uh, so that we know what you want to do. Um, we should be able to integrate with it. I can tell you that it's it's not something that's 
an impossibility at all, but you know we need to look at it. Yeah. I have another interesting question, and this is uh, something that um, probably is obvious but worth uh, repeating. The question is, does Flex2 Crystal work with pervasive databases? Uh, so this customer is using, um, they're using our SQL driver and they also have some pervasive sites. And the answer is that you should be able to because as long as you have an ODBC compliant um, database, uh, you should be able to use that. Um, right? All right. So this is a question, is, that, is there any feature in the new 2011 previewer to call back a function in your VDF program? Example, if you hover over a stock code and you say click on the value that is stock code feeds back into the VDF program from where you do something with it. Um, I think we have dug deeper into that, but probably we should. Look yeah, we, we haven't gone into that. Um, yeah, I believe all of that is there. In fact, uh, um, one of the things that uh, there, there's lots of pieces of this that you know. I mean, Crystal is a very large product, so we've been looking at you know just certain pieces of it. Um, the viewer has available in the version that uh, you know for the CTP even um, something like ninety or a hundred, something like that, somewhere in that range events for the viewer that occur. Um, so there is, and of course, you know, the prior version of Crystal had a handful that you could reasonably use well. Uh, so that's expanded just a ton from what was there before. So, and and I know that's something that they've worked on. I don't quite know if it allows stuff like, uh, um, you know, drilling down into a report or things like that. I, I know they have events for clicking on all the toolbar buttons and things like that. So um, we should the, the support's gotten a lot further that way. Yeah, but well, we should, you know, the, the we should look. We we will look into this and see if um, this specific issue is uh, resolved. Or not. I don't think we focused on that, right? So there could be a way to do this all over. Correct. Right. Okay. The other question is exclusive mode. Does that mean only one person can run the report at a time? And I'm assuming this has to do with the read-only report. No, no, this or doesn't. No, okay. The, the exclusive mode that I was talking about has to do with when you are designing the report. So it doesn't have to do anything with running the report at all. Um, it has to do with, uh, with when you're in design mode with the report. So when you have the report open in Crystal Reports Designer, um, that report can't be run um, from outside of Crystal Reports Designer. So it, it has the actual RPT file locked. Um, while it's doing that, and literally it just it just can't load the report from anywhere else while that file is locked, and it's just a standard Windows locking. Prior versions of Crystal did not lock the file in that manner when you just opened it. That is something that they're doing now. I don't know why they're doing that. I haven't been able to find any explanation for that. Um, and you know, it's it's one of those <laughs> just one of those things that's changed that uh, that we'll have to learn to deal with. And and I hit it all the time, by the way. Um, uh, I finally have gotten myself into the mode where I remember to close the report before I test run it. Um, but that is that is definitely a change, and that's something that we actually already have documented in our um, uh, in our getting started guide also. Okay. So here's um, another question. Uh, since we are using an old version of Crystal, I recently had to set up a subclass to log into Oracle for the subreports. Just wondering how that is handled here. Um, there are, uh, well, in the newer versions, you can you can set a lot of that stuff to be passed down from the main report into the sub-report, and that, that's probably the preferable way of doing it. I actually don't have an example of doing that, because uh, mine are all logging into the same place. Um, but passing that down from inside the report uh, does work, and for most of the stuff, like if you want go in and set the, uh, the data source, the DSN, and all of that, um, all of those functions have already been ported over uh, in uh, the Flex to Crystal package. So, um, unless it, you know, unless there's something odd that you're doing that that's, uh, um, you know, just really out of the norm, it should just work the way you have it right now. Um, so we we thought of that and added support for that initially. Okay. Uh, another question on parameters: Can you, in code, interrogate the uh, Parameter settings. Can you find out what parameter settings are there in the code? 
Yeah, let me uh, let me just show you something related to that real quick. I don't um, think they. Could, I think we'll have to end the poll to see that, right? Oh yeah, if it's not sharing my screen, uh, so Will probably didn't see me change it to Spanish form there, but I, I changed the parameter for him to to show uh, Spanish on it uh, at runtime. Uh, let's see. So is my screen being shared again? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so here's a here's the parameter field definition class documentation um, for Crystal Reports 2011. Um, and uh, like for instance, to go in and change the prompt text, I just change that property. So all of those all of those new properties that are there um, on all the classes um, uh, that we've got exposed right now, you have access to directly through here. But yeah, there is quite a bit of interrogation you can do. You can get what the current values are. Um, you have the ability to deal da drill down into the default values of parameters, um, stuff like the sort value on the default values. So all, all kinds of stuff. You can definitely, um, you know, go in and tweak uh, all of those in addition to interrogating them. Right. All right. The other question here is that. Have you done any testing on large databases or large reports with sorts? Uh, I don't think we have done any large testing, but this shouldn't have any, any this shouldn't be any different from uh, previous versions because the uh, the engine that generates the SQL should still be the same way. Correct. Yeah. No, nothing on the back end there is, has uh, has changed from that standpoint. Um, you know, any of any of the sorting quirks or any of those things that. Um, you know, were required on prior versions of Crystal are still going to be there here where, you know, you have to make sure you have, um, uh, you know, optimizations on your SQL server and all of that. But since all the report side stuff is run in the Crystal engine and that's being called directly, our layer isn't really doing anything other than calling that. Um, the Flex to Crystal layer only really adds overhead when the very first report is run and that's simply there's two pieces to it. There's loading Flex to Crystal, which is a which is a minor, um, you know, piece of it. But then there's also loading all the Crystal.net libraries, and so you would have that you have that same delay, for instance, on a Crystal report loaded in uh, a C Sharp application. There, you still have to you know load all of those pieces of it. So, uh, you know, it shouldn't be any slower otherwise. Though the only thing that would impact sorting. Um, which is again the database performance. The database server is not going to change. It's the same thing. It will, Crystal is going to generate the same queries. The only thing that could put, put, uh, potentially have an impact is the communication layer between .NET and, and, and the database. Now, in the previous versions, you know, Microsoft, for example, in Microsoft SQL Server, you had the, uh, you know, the ODBC and OLEDB that we use in our drivers. But for for .NET, they have something called an OLEDB. Uh, data providers, which in the case of Microsoft SQL Server, from what I understand, they actually are going um, at the very low level down to their um, uh, communications library. So, so in some cases, might be faster uh, with with some databases, and in others, it should still be the same. Uh, one question: uh, I believe the old Crystal Report class uses the CRPE32.dll print engine. Is that supported or emulated? No, it is not. The, the CRPE layer um, is not there. That's, that's kind of what we were talking about with supporting um, like the, uh, the VDF7 um, interface, uh, you know, back, back between VDF7 and a little bit later, 11, 12, sometime in there. Um, <coughs> excuse me, rather than an RDC interface, uh, it was a straight DLL using the CRPE32 DLL. Um, and so uh, we are not, we currently do not have support for that. In fact, um, for the for that uh, for the abilities to use this from VDF7, those those aren't ready right now, anyways. And they they will, um, you know, if that ends up uh, uh, making its way out, if enough people end up needing that, that will require some pretty substantial report view code changes. It's not going to be a compatibility layer like it is for RDC. Um, so, okay. I've got a few uh, that that have come to me directly, Riaz. Okay. Um, Go ahead. 
One of them here is uh, that we use the Crystal Report class. Can you explain how this is different than C Crystal? The, the Crystal Report class, uh, I, I want to be clear about this. There, um, there's C Crystal Report and there's Crystal Report. The Crystal Report class is for interfacing with the CRP32, so, so that we're not supporting. The C Crystal Report is the RDC interface, and, and that's, that's what our layer sits on top of. Um, so that, that's really the difference there. Uh, next up, I've got um, uh, about parsing the DOM model. I mean, looping through the report sections and objects in those sections. Uh, Tom, was there, a, was there a first half of that question that I missed? I didn't get that. Um, you can hit me back on that. Um, I'm going to move on here. Does Flex to Crystal do something to make the portrait land? We already did that one. Uh, when the CDOs are implemented, implemented, will the data have to be in SQL? No, the idea of CDOs is that you're populating um, a data source from code. So the data isn't, isn't going to be in SQL. You uh, basically have, uh, you're passing arrays more or less um, onto, uh, onto Crystal and uh, it uses a descriptor file called a TTX file. And uh, so Basically, it gives you a way of having a data source that is, you know, based on a loop in your code or something like that. Um, so those don't have to be based on a crystal backend or a SQL backend at all. No. Um, I have a couple of questions. Oh, okay. okay, go for it. All right, so one question is what databases do you support? Well, we, we don't support any database. We are not going to just support native Dataflex database because in order to use native Dataflex database from Crystal, you need to write that, uh, you, you can use uh, probably ODBC or something to connect to that, but we are not going to provide the old connectivity kit style direct interface to Dataflex. Um, and basically any database that you're using uh, that Crystal supports is, is going to work for, with your reports. Um, so you'll have SQL, Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, whatever you're using with that. Uh, one question here is, can the crystal component be placed on several containers like within a pop-up dialog or embedded in a view? Um, that's from Hans. Um, yes, yes it can. Um, that, that's part of uh, right at the end uh, of the presentation there, I mentioned that we're working on some of those little bit different structures. That's one of those that we're working on. Um, in fact, We've done some testing with it, and we have it working. There are a few bugs uh, that we need to work out in relation to getting that just right in all those places. But in general, yes, the, the intention is for that to work very soon. That was just a, um, uh, one of the pieces that uh, you know, we've actively been working on right now is making sure it embeds properly. So yeah, that'll be there. Um, Mark Powers asks, uh, has Crystal improved image support any? Um, yes and no. Uh, they, they haven't really changed much. I, I, if I recall right, I don't know if I have anything to pull up in here. Um, I just won't show that. Um, the, uh, they've, they've improved support, I think, for types of images. I don't think they've made some of the quirks of dealing with images any better yet. Um, so uh, I think what some of the stuff you may be referring to with the way it handles uh, uh, stretching and rendering, they haven't fixed anything in relation to that at all. Um, okay, Tom, take two. Can you get hold of an object in a report, a field object, and update the suppression formula? That's a good question. Um, Right now, can you do that? I, uh, to be completely honest, I don't know if we have all the classes you'll need for that right now. Um, I think most of them you'll need are in there. Uh, we actually had to include quite a bit uh, of depth for, uh, for fields and DB fields and things like that to, to deal with a couple of situations. Um, uh, in relation to setting sorts and things like that. So um, I, uh, I'll need to look into that a bit further for you, but I think we're there now. If not, it's something that will definitely be there very soon. 
um, there's a possibility we may need one more class uh, in relation to the suppressions to get that working. All of the classes for uh, for digging it down to field objects are there, though. Um, All right. So that should be there. I, I will take some of these questions, I guess, in more detail later on. So please send um, answers, uh, questions to Oliver or myself, and we'll, we'll, we'll get it done. Um, I have a bunch of other questions, Oliver. We'd like to get to them quickly. Web classes for web app? Not yet. Not yet. All right. Uh, do they support more than one level of sub-report that is drilled down from the sub-report? Uh, drilled down from the sub-report. Um, I do not know. Uh, I, that's not something we've tried. We'll look into that. Yeah. Um, in fact, you guys, you guys should be able to, after December 15th, I think that, you know, or maybe sooner, you should be able to get your hands on the CDP and play around with it and, get, and answer some of these questions. Uh, how many service packs have been released so far for Crystal 2011? Um, <laughs> Oliver, you, you have that info? Uh, yeah, here, let me. Uh, okay. Uh, is the interface on, done in... Sorry? N never mind, you can just uh, move on while I look at that. Yeah. Uh, is the interface done in C sharp? Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about the, um, the, the COM stuff. Yes, it is in C sharp. Uh, are there any plans for VDF7 integration? Um, we do plan to support VDF7 in some form. Uh, we don't have, um, it's not going to be seamless uh, because we had to pick a version of Dataflex um, that would allow us a seamless integration. And we had, of course, we went with the 12, uh, all the versions uh, after 12.1. With VDF7, there will be a way, um, simply because there are so many <laughs> customers out there still using VDF7, surprisingly, but they are using it. And what we're going to do is that uh, somewhere down the line, we will publish uh, some information about how we will go about doing that. Um, it will require some, some changes in the code. Uh, that's a given. It's not going to be seamless. Um, offline, okay. Service Pack 2, by the way, for uh, Crystal Reports 2011, they're Service Pack 2, which was released sometime in November. Okay. Oliver, you have any more questions? I think I'm done here. Uh, no, that's all I got. All right. That's great. Um, thank you all for participating. It was really great. I mean, the, 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 the number of questions that we got interesting and uh, widespread and by a lot of different uh, users, so that's very good. Um, we're going to um, like I said, that we're going to have the CTP available um, in the next few days, and um, those who are who signed up for the webinar will get an email about that, um, so you can download it, register, and let us know what you think. We would certainly like to hear more from you about um, the, you know the problems you might face. Um, well, thanks. Uh, there's a comment here. Great guys, uh, great work, guys. Well done. Uh, so great work, Oliver, and 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 to the rest of the team uh, who have worked here on this. So one of the things that um, what what after the end of the seminar uh, webinar, you're going to get a, a an email, automatic email, with a thank you and with a survey link. There will be a couple of questions there. Uh, please uh, do take the time to answer those questions. It always helps us understand what we are doing right or wrong. Um, and outside of that, um, I think we're done here. Um, Oliver, you have any comments? Uh, no, I just want to thank uh, thank everyone uh, for joining us and. Uh, the, uh, the other developers that have that have worked uh, with me over at Martech on, on getting this going, uh, there's there's still a lot to do, and this is going to turn out to be a, a really great product. Uh, lots of uh, I know lots of developers are looking forward to it. Right, and and one of the things that you know we are asking questions to all the developers. We're always talking because this has truly been a kind of a a, a uh, pro project that has been uh, not something that we thought up of, but it was driven by the community. They wanted something. Um, the business uh, dynamics made sense to do this. And so we, had, we went ahead and made the investment in there. So we're going to be constantly pinging you guys, asking questions, uh, want your feedback. Uh, and those who have already been given us great feedback, thank you all. Uh, with that, we'll end. Bye, all. Bye.